up, nerds? Sup? Hello, how are you all doing? Uh, I'm Scala Kitty. Uh, I'm going to be your next uh, sort of uh, little host here for a while. Yeah, we can call it. We can say I'm a host. <laughs> Uh, so Leggy is going to be joining me, and uh, we're going to be doing just some super chill, uh, draw like doodling and discussions. It's fun. It's going to be a fun time, and I hope you all will enjoy. Uh, I'm going to sort of give us a very quick rundown of uh, how things are going to work. Uh, basically, uh, we're going to sort of start talking and then uh if you in chat would like to uh change up what we're talking about uh where you see the channel points in there there's a thousand points to ask a question and uh that will count as uh changing up the discussion topic um but what we're going to do first is we're going to actually talk about uh haven a little bit let me yeah we can just keep the music going that's fine I was like, ah, oh, I realized. By the way, I moved us into another channel, oh. so you might, you'll need to restart it for me. Oh, yes, let me restart. Um, I am not allowed. Wait. I am not allowed to start the thing. I was trying to, to pipe audio to Leggy so Leggy could hear my cool tunes, but I am not allowed oh. to let you hear my cool tunes, unfortunately, Leggy. Um, give me a sec. Okay. Uh, you keep going. You keep going. I'm gonna. I'm I'll make it okay. work. I can fix the tech. All right. Cool. We're we're gonna we're gonna fix it live. So basically, uh, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start by talking about Haven, which originally this this time was slotted for a panel about Haven. I still want to talk about Haven because Haven is super great. But then afterwards, uh, we'll kind of talk about whatever's. And I think that's gonna be fun. Uh, but. Let me, uh, what I'm going to do is let me see if I can do a file import. Uh, that actually, should that should fix it? Okay. Oh, it did fix it. Nice. I have learned the power. There you go. Uh, and... All right. Hopefully it will all connect. Nope, it's still not letting me connect it. I'm sorry, Leggy. Oh no. Oh no. Oh well. It'll be okay. You can you can futz about it while I talk about Haven, if you mm. want to. So anyway, let's talk about Haven. Uh, give me one second. I just have to grab us a photo, because it'll help us talk about Haven. Yeah! Aww. So Haven, uh, it's a pretty interesting game. Uh, it is a sort of three games, kind of three different styles of games into one. Uh, it is a visual novel. It is an exploration game. It is a uh, RPG uh, all at once. Uh, and Haven is about, uh, you can see my mouse. It's about uh, our, our beautiful couple here, uh, Kay. And you, but also if you want to be, it could be about K and you, or maybe even K and you. Uh, it's sort of this very interesting thing where Caven was originally released as a um, as a game where your couple option was a heterosexual couple, and then after the game came out, they went back in, reworked the entire game basically, and they, they turned it into. Uh, the choice of where you have, you know, oh, I realized you can't actually see me right now. Oh no. How did I manage to do that? Oh, I know what happened. I have to re import our. We're supposed to have our cute little icons going. That's okay. I know, we have, like, all this stuff that's happening, like, live. Oh. Like, yeah, I know it's weird, but could we maybe mm -hmm. move... Could we maybe move back down to green room? I know that's weird, but I think it's because I'm in oh, a locked channel. Wait. Yeah, that would do it. Yeah. We're gonna move.
All right, we did a little switcheroo. We did a little switcheroo, yay! And hopefully now, yeah, now you can see us. Yeah. Hi. And now you'll be able to hear my music too, Buggy. Excellent. Cool. Anyway, Haven, super cute game. But like I said, the interesting thing about it is that it's a game that kind of got like very queer after it came out. So you kind of have your original story. And the thing is, the story doesn't change. The story doesn't change. The character personalities don't change, uh, depending upon which version you're playing. So, so, K, uh, the brunette, is always like the sort of more conscientious and uh, empathetic scientist, and then U is always the hot-headed pilot. And those character dynamics are always the same. And like I said, the story dynamics also always the same. So every story beat is the same, no matter which version of the couple you're playing. Um. <laughs> yes, everyone should get very queer after they come out. Absolutely neon binary. But um, but it's this interesting thing where then like the like I said, the story is always the same. So it sort of creates this uh. Thing where like what happens to the story beats and, and how some of them hit harder or softer depending upon which version you're playing as uh, the sort of the general plot of Haven is that uh, K and U have escaped from their uh, authoritarian society called the Apiary uh, where basically kind of everything's sort of planned out for you uh, and that includes who you're going to marry and then like, you know, be, you know, having like kids with and all this sort of stuff. That's all planned out by the government uh, through an agency called the Matchmaker. Um, and Kay and you were not matched together and they decide that they're just going to heck off instead and go to a whole other planet uh, and make their own lives for themselves. And so the game is sort of, it happens after they've already landed on their deserted planet. And so the game is sort of part exploring this planet alongside uh, K and U, but also figuring out the sort of the first act of their uh, relationship that we don't see. So, you know, there might be different references to like dates or conversations they've had in the past. And because of that, they sort of hide some things from the characters, but they also hide some things from the player. Um, and so the sort of like the big story beats that we have are eventually uh, robot cops start coming for them. And you have like one of my favorite uh, options in the game, which is you could just be like, heck the cops and start fighting them. And it's great. But then um, after that, they decide to like, be like, oh, maybe we should like try and tell people, no, don't bother us. We don't want like any trouble. We just don't want to have to deal with things. And so they end up uh, making use of a old communicator to contact uh, Yu's mom. Now, Yu's mom arena is pretty interesting um, because no matter which version you're playing, she is always a lesbian. Like that's was true in the original game and true in all the other variations. And it sort of comes this like weird thing where, you know, she has like her wife and she's perfectly happy, but she will very much push you no matter what to go with the person you was originally set up with. Um, and the gender of that person does not change. So you, no matter whether you is male or female is always paired up with a man. Um, same thing, uh, K, no matter if male or female, always paired up with a woman. Which also kind of like does add this interesting layer where it's like, okay, on one version of things, if you go the queer route, it's you escaping being shoved into a heterosexual relationship. And if you go with the gay version, then it's Kay who's the one who's escaping, like, you know, having to be forced to a heterosexual relationship. But because of this, like, arena, uh, let's use mom, has this sort of weird vibe of this sort of like, I got mine <laughs> and not really caring like what uh, her kid really wants 
which is kind of like a complicating thing because you learn that um, you is uh, was supposed to be marrying uh, a uh, what's the best term for it? It's kind of like you know, like, like I said, this is an authoritarian society, but you know, this sort of high-ranking government official. Which kind of complicates things, because uh, you never told Kay that. And then they sort of have this great big fight. It's a very interesting thing, because it ends up like breaking the gameplay. A lot of the gameplay revolves around being able to use both Kay and you at the same time. It's also great for a couch co-op in this way, because you can have both players sitting beside, and each person gets one half of the couple to, uh, to work with. If you're playing solo, you have to sort of learn how to control them in tandem, which... I really like how they did it. it. It feels very interesting and natural, though it's on the combat it takes a little bit to uh, get around to. But um, but they have a big fight, and then they do like end up, uh, uh, you know, um, apologizing to each other, and it's a nice little beat in the middle of the game, and then like you start getting like receiving threats from it's uh, Ozius is the name of uh, use. Uh, original uh, proposed husband, uh, which also, like I said, does not change. He's 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 going to creep on you no matter which gender you is. So it ends up being this very you know, like if you're playing um, for the uh, the two ladies, it definitely has like a much harsher vibe. Do you know what I mean, Leggy? Mm -hmm. Whereas with the you know, I'm, I'm just enraptured right now. <laughs> Do not mind me. <laughs> okay, okay. Whereas, whereas if you play as the, the, the male couple, it it's, it's slightly softer because now you're playing a game where literally every character is queer. It's like, yeah, Ozzy is this a creep, but like you have, and, and Arena is this, I should also put in, Arena is also like an arch capitalist and a government bootlicker, like, so it's like those are like things that are more important to her character than the fact that she's a lesbian in a lot of ways. And to be fair, this, you know, there are definitely people who are like that, who are the I got mine, you know, I don't care about anyone else. So uh, the end of the game, uh, it kind of depends on your choices at the very end. Um, there's a good ending and a bad ending. Uh, the bad ending, you don't really get to play out. It just kind of happens where uh, if Kay and you decide that they're going to try and uh, fight back when Ozius arrives, that ends up failing and they end up captured. And then uh, they're both brainwashed. I think the term is recalibrated, which obviously that has like a certain type of meaning. You know, that definitely hits harder when you're playing as either of the two queer couples. You know, especially I feel when you're playing as the lesbian couple, the fact that, you know, you get calibrated and then removed from her lesbian relationship and turned into a trophy wife for, for a man obviously has a much different hit um, than even, you know, the same thing happens to, to male you, like he still gets, you know, recalibrated and turned into a trophy husband. But it definitely hits slightly differently. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It is like yeah. Uh, yeah, the bad ending it does make me feel very like it like but with both K's of K end up ends up like back in the original marriage they were going to be in and they have like a kid and everything. And I'm like slightly more hopeful, but oh you like I said, the big thing about you is you has like a ton of personality. Uh no matter which version you're playing as, they're very playful they're like super competitive and hot-headed and very passionate and seeing them in the bad ending where they're just kind of like made sort of like vapid and shallow is like no oh it hurts but that's also because you like between the two is my favorite i like you a lot even though during the whole giant argument scene i get mad at you because you Aww. Well, you, 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 you said some things they come to very much regret, and the argument scene is very interesting as a player because you can't stop that argument. Like, um, Haven, like I said, has like the, these sort of visual novel sections where you, as the player, get to like influence the way the conversation goes, 
And if you're playing two player, uh, each one of you has one half of the conversation that you're working with. If you're playing single player, you control both halves of the conversation. But it doesn't matter which, um, like how, like what control method you're doing. You cannot stop the big argument from happening, and you cannot stop the worst of it from happening. All you can kind of do is be like, try to like patch it over and be like, no, you didn't mean that. But the good um, thing is, what? Hmm? I I just have to comment yes. on language and being. And chat's bringing this up a little bit too, but yeah. the difference between you, as yes. in you the player, yes. versus you, you as in the character. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that does make it a little hard sometimes to talk about. It. And then, like, doubly on top of it, uh, you then have. Wait, I'm trying to speak, like, above for, like, the like character general. There are some things that are more particular to one gender of the character than the other. Because they did slightly adjust some things, but not a lot, actually. Uh, the amount that they've met, they kept in, that, that just stays the same no matter which gender you're playing as, is actually really interesting. Like, basically, well, they did have to re-record the whole game, because they re-recorded it with two different uh, voice actors, obviously. Um... They, they tried as much as possible to preserve as much as they could. It's only, like, in a few places where there's a clear gender difference. Like, early on, um, uh, Kay shows you uh, a picture of, like, the person they were supposed to be marrying. And, you know, you, you was always like, oh, she's cute! And then Kay can kind of, like, you know... Be like, no, but I think, you know, you're cuter, basically. <laughs> and then I like that um, Yu's reaction does, like, slightly change depending upon gender. Where female Yu will sort of make a joke about wearing makeup. But male Yu will make a joke about about how high maintenance his hair is. And I'm like, oh, that's cute. Like, those are, like, very subtle things. And, uh, like, there's, like, subtle things like that. Or their reaction to their pet, which is the best pet, which is uh, uh, Oink, the giant mushroom lizard, where they will, you know, obviously, depending upon which version you play, it's either Papa K and Papa U or Mama K and Mama U, <laughs> which I think is very cute. But they do a very good job. The game also is very fun because um, there's a lot of exploring to do. And your reward for exploring is just more cuteness between the couple. <laughs> That's like your reward. <laughs> it's like your a reward is adorability. Your no, it literally is, and it also has a uh, exp system built into it. With the best mm -hmm. thing is that the exp is like uh, it grows more depending upon story progress. And on finding cute things to do as a couple than it does on the battles. The battles will give you a small amount of EXP, but 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 like actually interacting as a couple always gives you more e EXP, which I think is very fun and a very interesting way to play it. Mm -hmm. Especially because every time you you level up, uh, K and you they have a little celebration. They have they have apple they have like apple cider together, and then you get like a special scene for the level ups that are always like really fun. And the other thing that's really interesting about the game is they made it so that way, it, how no matter how you explore the game, you will always, you know, be able to complete it. Uh, you complete the game by finding all the pictures of their, uh, sorry, sorry, all the pieces of their missing ship. Like, you basically have to repair the ship that they have, and that's how you complete the game. Because at the end of the game, the uh, the good ending, I did not talk at all about the good ending. The good ending is that uh, K and you decide to completely cut off their planet from from the rest of civilization is the good ending. Um, which is very dramatic and no matter what you do one of them ends up permanently scarred because of it. Um, which is unfortunate but at the same time like no matter which one it is they kind of they come to terms with it. Mm -hmm. um, in my playthrough uh, you was the one who ended up scarred. Um, it depends. This is something where like it depends on, like, a whole lot of uh, choices you make over the course of the game. 
who will end up being the uh, the person who gets scarred. But at the end, though, you know, they kind of they choose each other over everything else, which is definitely an interesting ending, especially like I said, if you play as one of the the queer versions of the couple. And I, I don't know. Some people found the ending to be kind of like I don't know, not anticlimactic, I guess, because it's just like this sort of like acceptance of like, like that's it, like it's just the two of us now, like for the rest of our lives, and it is a sort of weird, you know, sort of feeling that they're both like, well, this thing we're gonna kind of have to get used to, and it kind of hasn't hit them yet, and that's kind of where it leaves off. And I'm like, you know what? That's totally fine. Yeah, that. Kind of strikes me as a bit truer to life yeah. than, you know, a lot of other ways. I mean, the, the the other reason why Haven is really, really good is that they do a very good job keeping everything, like, very natural between the couple. Uh, you know, and also probably one of the things they sort of, the, the devs said, kind of, like, influenced them is, like, so often in video games, the romance is just, like, an extra thing on the side like separate mm -hmm. from the main game whereas with Haven they wanted to make sure that the romance is like in the very DNA of the game like mm -hmm. that's it like you you should be here because you really like K and you you like their relationship and they also like don't um, they don't shy away from a lot of stuff other games might uh, the game is rated M for mature mainly because the game is exceedingly sex positive like, there's no question that, you know, Kay and you are a young couple, and they, you know, they enjoy having sex with each other, and the game doesn't stray away from that. You never, nothing is ever, everything's all black screened out, but you know what's going on. And that's fine. I actually, like, like the fact that it has this very, like, upbeat, positive attitude about all that sort of stuff. And, but it also has, like, other sort of, like, like, couple stuff, like, you know... Like some, you know, like you, they'll might argue about like what they want to eat, or there's uh, one of my favorite scenes that's just kind of early on in the game is K is up late um, studying the scientific phenomenon they find on the planet, which is this stuff called rust, and it is like trying to like, you know, and you kind of like sleepily comes in, just like, are you still up? Are you still doing things? And K's like, yeah. Do you want to hear about all my, you know, cool discoveries? And you just like. Uh, let me go to the bathroom first, and then we can talk about it. I'm like, yes, good. Excellent actually showing, you know, two characters who are living together interacting with one another. I don't know. It's just a very good game. You should totally uh, play it. It's not super long. It's only about 15 hours, and I think another, like, five hours if you want 100% it like I did. And it's just, it's good. It's got great writing, great voice acting. It's just a lot of fun to play. Like I said, there's stuff like mushroom lizards and, and flying whales and turnip dudes. <laughs> and lots of bugs and cheetahs and all sorts of fun animals. And you can just chill and you can go to the beach. You can, you can find action figures based off of children's shows. <laughs> And then watch as Kay tries to act out an episode, and then you comes in and ruins it. <laughs> it's great. Oh, no! no! <laughs> you play flow now. You ruined. I mean, I don't know. I I don't know how other people have you ruined it. I had you ruined it by you basically smashing the Barbie dolls together and making them. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> Kay's just, Kay just like, you don't understand the point of the show. And like, you're just like, I understood the point of the show. <laughs> Actually, here, I'm going to now scoot around and we'll get to other things now. But thank you for listening to me ramble about Haven for like a half hour. <laughs> but you know what, Leggy? Like, so here. Chat, if you want to have us talk about something, uh, here's some suggestions. Also, I'll put up the the last time I kind of did something like this. Here's some more suggestions of things we can talk about, we can draw. But definitely the ones on the first screen, kind of. I have thoughts and opinions about. But, like, you had brought up... Uh, actually, let me do this one thing we have to kind of set up with this. Which is... I'm going to make sure that this all 
looks okay. Great. Great. I'm going to have a folder that basically, whenever we're done talking about something, it will go into the folder. <laughs> so that way we stay up here. Boop. Boop. But, Leggy, you had a question for me before we got started. Or there had been a meme going around about ship dynamics. <laughs> ah, yes. So, here's my thought. Okay, what's Leggy's thought uh, on ship because, dynamics? Because, uh, you know, the meme is just basically uh, people talking about their favorite dynamics in shipping. Yes. By drawing the, yeah. the, the dynamic in an abstract sense. So, it's yes. not in two characters in particular. It's just mm. the abstract, like, okay, the this is the dynamic between two characters generically generically i had to kind of like i had to think about this because i think i think i think there's a couple of different ship dynamics i really really like <laughs> there's a whole bunch um i definitely kind of like uh imagine liking cuties being cute together i know right But the thing is, like, so here, we'll, we'll sort of... Because we're in sort of, like, a space that kind of grew out of, like, speed running. But, you know, I, I came from, like, more of, like, the sort of the art and fic and shipping culture side of video games before I got involved in speed running. So it's, it's always been, like, this sort of interesting thing where, like, that was just sort of part and parcel to, uh to how I experienced games and then sort of coming into a space where that's not where like the expected experience is mm -hmm. is very interesting <laughs> Binary has a good one Uh <laughs> Let's go ever given baby love the ever given. Yes. I definitely I definitely like uh two people who are equally who who are messy in different ways but love each other anyway, I think is a is a big one. I like I, I like mess in my shipping. <laughs> um what other dynamics do I think are really fun? Um See, the thing is, like, I'm one of those people who, like, I, what's the term, subjectify things? So, like, I kind of, like, the, the way I sort of, like, go with ships is, like, they're so much, like, that particular pair. I definitely like the sort of like I don't want to use the term wife guy, but it's kind of like the term wife guy. Like but that sort of <laughs> like kind of thing. We're like, this is my partner. They are amazing. I like that. I I I, I have a big affection for like the sort of the, actual wholesomeness. Well not just actual wholesomeness. I that because you can have that and have it not and have it have like, you know, a twist to it. True, true. I mean, I like, uh, there, you know, there's definitely something to be said for, like, the, the sort of, like, the extreme dedication. Does that make sense? Yep. I mean, I, I did a whole panel about that with, with, with Ignis and Noctis. 
Yep. Where Ignis has 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 the the incredibly dedicated energy to the point where I'm like, that might not be super healthy, my friend. Yeah, I, I, I guess when you, you bring this particular dynamic up, my brain immediately jumps to Maze Hughes from Full Metal Alchemist. Mm. But def, def, definitely the, uh, I, I, I do like the I would do absolutely anything for them. Mm -hmm. But that's like, you know, an interesting kind of dynamic because like then you have to say like what are what are the bounds of uh of anything well according to meatloaf it's just that yes <laughs> because that's an interesting dynamic that that uh you can kind of like have fun like tw twisting around mm-hmm I like how I have all this like Latin choir stuff going on behind me as I'm doing this. Uh... Here. There we go. Yes. But I like I, I don't know I, I like I like anything for love dynamics. I think it's mm. I think it's interesting. I like it when it's like completely cute and sweet, but it's fine when it's dark, too. Mm -hmm. Also, I just love the little face on the person who's like, <laughs> I have no idea how to handle this. <laughs> but I've heard a lot. But that's the thing, though. It's like, it's when you sort of talk about that sort of stuff, like, like to the extremes that you can get in fiction, mm -hmm. you know, like, like I said, like, like, talking about, you know, uh, you know, uh, Ignis and, and Noctis from FF15, like, like Ignis is basically is like, I'm going to undo fate for you. <laughs> like, what do you, like, how do you, like, respond to that? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, punch out the Antichrist. <laughs> I mean, at a certain point, my answer just is, uh, good luck, have fun. Yeah, I mean, It's interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> to say the least. To say the least. Oi. Poor FF15, though. I feel bad for that game as much as I love it. <laughs> it, got, it got a slightly short end of this deck. Yeah, which is unfortunate because it does look really good. Like, here's the thing: if I'm like, I'm like, I still say, please go play FF15. I still think it's worth people's time to go play it mm -hmm. because it does enough right. Especially now that you know you have like the royal edition that kind of goes in and fixes a bunch of things, and you have like all the DLC and everything. Mm -hmm. So you could, it's like you have like a better sense of of it at this point. But you know the fact that the last half of the DLC got canceled, and then Tabata left, and I'm like, something definitely happened there. We'll never find out exactly what it was, but something happened there. Yeah, it's always interesting when you can, like, circle around, like, ooh, there's, like, something weird happened here, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's definitely a little weird. It's definitely a little weird, that's for sure. I don't know, I have, I have extremely weird feelings about the Crisis Core remake. Mm -hmm. Well, remaster, however they're going to do it. So, for those of you who don't know, 
who don't know me. Hi, I'm Scala. Uh, and I'm, hi, Scala. Hi, I'm Scala, and I love Crisis Core. Crisis Core is one of my favorite video games. Definitely my favorite game on the PSP, for sure. And I have mixed feelings about it getting an HD remaster. I was just drawing Ignis for the sake of drawing Ignis. Let's doodle up an Ignis. Yeah. And then I'm going to draw right next time. I'm going to draw my boy Liz <laughs> <laughs> but Do I, it. I suppose my 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 concerns, my concerneds with it are two things basically. Uh, what are yeah? What are the downsides? What are the downsides? Let's that's that's where I was going to get to. So my my big downside is that. Uh, Hachime Tabata, the original director of Crisis Core, is no longer with Square Enix. He left the company. So it feels very weird to do a remake of Crisis Core without his involvement. That's like sort of like step number one. Um, the thing though is that it looks like it's not like it's just like an HD remaster more than anything else, which is fine. But the other part of it that makes me a little annoyed is... Um, the fact that everyone, as far as I can tell, and I'm someone who has good ears for this, especially for a game like Crisis Core, the they're going to be using the um, voice files from the original game, so the original voice acting, for the majority of the characters, except for Zack, who sounds like it's he's been completely redubbed by his... Uh, FF7 remake voice actor. So I think that's what Caleb Pierce, I think, is the name. And then the original voice actor was Rick Gomez. And it's just like, uh, I don't like Caleb anywhere near as much as I liked Rick Gomez. And so it's this sort of weird thing. Yeah, exactly. But it's weird because I'm pretty sure everyone else is the original cast. Especially weird for, like, Sephiroth, because Sephiroth has also been recast since. Hmm. I don't know what they're going to be doing if, like, if if it's all, if, like, if it's a mix of recast and original. It's just, like, this sort of weird situation to kind of be in. Yeah, it's got this, it feels like there is this weird, like... I don't want to say tension, but like definitely some choices being made back back in the old company. Yeah, here's the thing. Okay, so here we'll we'll talk about my thoughts on FF Seven remake and redoing like the English cast, which is that it's one of those things where I wish that shadow wasn't hanging over the project. Does that kind of make sense? Because, like, taken completely on their own, I feel that the remake VAs do a really, really, really good job. Mm -hmm. I feel, you know, that, that they are doing a really fantastic job. And I really enjoyed all their performances, you know, and, like, literally, except for Zach. Oh, I should put up a spoiler warning. Uh,. Spoiler alert, uh, Zack is an FF7 remake if you haven't played it yet. But, um... It's, you know... I want to be able to kind of, like, enjoy their performances without also being, like... Square Enix, why'd you have to do weird, you know, the stuff of, like, recasting people? And it, mm -hmm. I don't know. I have, I have all these sort of mixed thoughts about it. Because, like, like I said, I want to, like... I enjoyed the cast. I like like um Barrett's voice actor, John Eric Bentley, is amazing in that role. He's like so pitch perfect as Barrett, it's like not even funny. And like right? completely like revitalized the character for me. I feel gave Barrett like the, the breathed in like all this sort of really interesting life and personality into him. And it's just like, oh, I feel bad that there's all this other stuff happening. But which of course doesn't exist in Japanese. The, the Japanese cast is the Japanese cast is the Japanese cast. Like no one's 
nothing's happening there unless people like die, basically. <laughs> <laughs> So it's going to be like this weird thing, like when like the Crisis Core like remaster comes out. It's like, do I play it in English or do I play it in Japanese? Because the one thing that's going to be nice is that it's going to be being able to play Crisis Core in Japanese, but with English subtitles. Because ha ha ha, I played it in Japanese on the original release because I didn't want to have to wait six months for it to get localized. You all remember when that would happen? Hmm? Hmm? You had to wait, like, six months for things to get localized. Gods. I know, right? We're so spoiled nowadays with these simultaneous worldwide releases. Like, I'm like, is this a good enough Lazar? And I'm like, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't get a lot of love. How good... How, oh, that's, that's a fun question. How good... Um, good enough that I could play Crisis Core in Japanese. <laughs> Probably the answer. But, like, sort of, like, half understanding what was going on the whole time, and I kind of needed, like, other people to help me understand. I mean, I did do some, like, stuff with, like, helping out with, like, fan translations. Like, if you sent me, if you sent me down with, like, a dictionary... And, like, give me some time, I could probably... I can usually figure out what, you know, stuff, but, like, you... I can't like hold like a real time conversation. I'm not like that good. I would like to get better. That was one of the things I was trying to kind of do. But uh, then I got like sick and stuff. So. But. But I do have like opinions about, you know, voice acting and say you and everything. Um, I will say Sephiroth's Japanese voice actor is the. It's my absolute favorite Sephiroth actor. There's no one in my mind who holds a candle to Toshiyuki Morikawa. He's just the best. Um, my Sakamoto, a absolutely amazing Aerith. Um, so, really just... Like I said, it's one of those things where there's just, like, a lot going on with all of that, and it's just like, oh. we could definitely talk more about Ruby. Give me just, like, one second. I got asked a question. A question? I got I to ask a question for somewhere other than here. Ah. It will only take uh, a moment, though, hopefully, to answer it. Um yeah. But don't worry, that's one of the things that I'm good at. I'm good at being able to do two things at the same time. Which is... A powerful skill. A powerful sure. skill. <laughs> but anyway, um, if nothing else, though, um, if you do play um, Crisis Core Reunion, um, after you're you're done, uh, feel free to come talk to me about this nerd, about Lazar Deusericus. Um, we have the spoiler alert still up, so I could say this. Uh, the best of the Shinra siblings. <laughs> Which that to me, I have to admit, that's my favorite sort of uh, joke to make. Like if anyone ever has ever like ever tries to like gatekeep me on like Final Fantasy VII, is to just answer back, "Oh, cool. Who's your favorite Shinra sibling?" Because <laughs> it's great to watch them have to now think about what I just said, and it's like it's a good test of like like how like deep are you into FF Seven? <laughs> because there's three. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna Ignis, you go you're gonna go on a different layer real quick. Uh help if I 
Oh, I was off there. How do I move you down to layer below or just do layer? Drink, delete, cut and paste. See, because everyone, everyone knows Rufus, right? Yes. Yes, I definitely yeah. know Rufus Shinra. Yes, Rufus, Rufus Shinra, New Age. By the way, I'm so... Uh, Wait, is his last name actually New Age? No, 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 no. It's from, it's from, it's from the song. The, the Rufus, like, uh... Um... Uh... Like, his, like, little, like, like parade song I'm not liking this I'm going to just delete it so the Rufus like parade song you know like has like the Rufus Rufus actually hold up do I still have that in my music <laughs> I have I have the lyrical version of it well I guess it's time to bust out some lyrics it's time to bust out some lyrics N it is though you aren't streaming it to me right now. Oh, I'm not. I thought I was. Discord, why? It likes causing Discord. I know why. Is that... Oh, you know what it probably is. It's it might be sometimes the the track switching might mm. do it. Uh. Okay, here we go. I cannot wait to hear them have to deal with this song in rebirth. I hope that's not synced on stream because that would be hilarious. What? It, it, oh, it, it's probably that not synced on stream. <laughs> it's probably not synced. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Mostly because I think that would be hilarious. Like that, I understand. It's the Shinra Company new president. I like how I'm just like only like half-heartedly drawing Rufus. <laughs> You're like bopping along. I want to like... I mean, here's the thing. R Rufus in the remake I think is great. I I hope we get more of him. Because he was a lot of fun for the little bit we did get with him. Oh, he needs like some eyebrows. Though his his coat is definitely uh, a choice. I mean, look. Sometimes you just have to be out there making notable choices. No, I'm not saying good. I'm saying notable. I like how these have just gotten progressively messier. <laughs> Good. Okay. So here we go. We have we have the three Sh Shinra um, siblings that we know about. <laughs> mm -hmm. There we go. So. So, like, tier one knowledge is Rufus. Because he's the, he's the one legitimate son. And then <laughs> tier two is Lazard, uh, who is in Crisis Core. And then you have to actually piece together 
that he's uh <laughs> messy and also messy, yes. That he's um one of President Shinra's uh, illegitimate sons, well, Ill illegitimate children. The novels indicate that you know there's a whole there's a whole like you know variety of these uh, <laughs> these people out there. The the president not 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 one for discretion. Let's just let's just say it that way. <laughs> and then finally, tier three is Evan, who's only in the novels. And is a dork. Like, out of the three, Lazard is probably the best. <laughs> Just like on like a moral axis, but even he's like, there's a lot of weird, questionable moral sh stuff he does. Because he's a Shinra. <laughs> I shouldn't say because he's a Shinra, but that is a big thing in FF7, you know. The sort of whole back and forth between... Like, like, how much of, of of your nature can you like? It like defines you. It's like a, one of those big FF seven things. I feel. And so this, there is this sort of thing where with both like Rufus, like Rufus, like doesn't sort of shape it up until he almost dies, and Lazar doesn't shape up until he basically has the Shinra edited out of him, uh, via, uh weird genetic stuff because it's ff7 and then evan just doesn't have enough power to have anything go to his head <laughs> but he still has plenty of like mess and issues mm -hmm. so but it is this sort of thing because then you have you know like obviously sephiroth and Aerith sort of represent you know your your nature is 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 what defines you and it's something that is kind of inescapable. You know, and you are going to be destined to do one thing or the other because of, of your blood. Look, I know this isn't the point. Yes. But. But. Blood. 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 That one's for Demi. <laughs> Look, we're not even an hour in. I'm already, you know... You're already chitting for blood. I'm already fast and loose here. Let's That's go. That's fine. That's fine. We're big vibing. We're big vibing. Oh, actually, here. This is the guy I kind of had thought of would be fun for this, but I'm like, I don't know. Do we, do we want to have a discussion about how the heck uh, timelines work in FF7? <laughs> oh, God. Let's go. Let's go. This I love timeline nonsense. Timeline nonsense. We'll talk FF7 timeline nonsense. This, this is actually, I feel, a very interesting thing. So... So here you go, here's your spoiler alert right up front. Uh, FF7 Remake is not a remake of the original game. It is a self-sequel to the original game. So let's start there. And because of that, there's now all this time like line shenanigans that are happening. I don't know, I've, I don't know, this is one of those things like, like there's some things where like coming in knowing the twist I find makes it better. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I played uh, Bravely Default that way. Uh, for those of you who don't know the twist of Bravely Default, I'm sorry, I'm going to spoil that for you. Uh, the twist of Bravely Default is that your helper fairy, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of like your little Navi character, is actually on the side of the villain. And she's trying to lead you to cause the apocalypse. <laughs> but you know, I would have believed that if you had told me that Navi... Ocarina of Time was also yes. on the side of the villain trying yes. to lead you to cause the apocalypse. Yes, but like, honestly, with... it just seems like a thing Faye would do. Yeah, exactly. But that was the thing where, like, I found that out. I'm like, okay, now I'm suddenly much more interested in this game than I was before, now that I know the twist. I feel that FF7 Remake, I feel, is more interesting after you know the twist. I feel like you should go into it not knowing it. 
But then you should do mm -hmm. a second, which the game encourages a second playthrough by making it so yeah. that way some some parts of like the quests are like uh, locked and you can't get them all through the first time. You have to go through a second time. Okay, I'll I'll have to do that when I eventually sit down and play the game. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to spoil you for like a bunch of the stuff in it then. Oh, um, hmm. Do you want me? Do you want me to spoil you or not? Because like, if I talk about this, I will be spoiling a whole bunch of stuff for you. And while I don't mind spoiling in general, I will not spoil my friends if they ask me not to. I am going to humbly regret request that we pull we, we, we will not we will not spoil ff all you need to know is that there's weird timeline stuff happening and that the remake is a stealth sequel to the to the original game and uh once you know that uh, a lot of stuff will make much more sense is basically mm -hmm. all i will tell you but i am fine okay. to shelve that i'm i'm mainly thinking about it because uh my friend inven uh he recently played it for the first time and I got to watch his playthrough, and then I was like, I'm going to go and uh, watch a bunch of theory videos now. Mm-hmm. Because I have my theories, but I will not spoil them. Also, hey, it's the Turks theme. Uh, tsh. See, the thing is, like, it's like, I want to talk about these things, but then I'll, I'll spoil people. It's like, I want to talk about the Live Alive remake. <laughs> But then I'll spoil people. Because the best part about it is the spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> but it reminds me almost of just like how deep the Kingdom Hearts Oh god. Theory got after Cage 3. I read the 400 page document. Did you know there's a 400 page document you can read? Scully, you sent it to me and then I read that's, it. That's right. That's right. We both read it. <laughs> Uh, which has only gotten more complicated, as far as I know. And, like, I think it's been soft disproven by, you know... The thing is, is yeah. that is that I haven't, like, kept up on... See, so the thing with, 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 like, Kingdom Hearts is that all of it is actually important. All of it is important. All of it is important. It's so wild. And it's one of those I things have... where it's like, I can't tell, like, how much of this was, like, actually planned and how much of it they made, like, significant later. Yeah, like, I guess my question is, when did they know they were going to go this deep? Yeah, that, like, because it's weird because, like, there'll be stuff that gets referenced, like, back to, like, KH1. And you're like, yeah. was that R always in the plan, or...? Well, what, what are you thinking of? I think we can spoil anything that isn't literally, you know, from Melody of Memory. Um, the the pod stuff. I meant, like, that, oh, yeah. like, like in the context of, um... Of, uh, the mobile game, uh, Union Cross, like... Right. Like, those end up you know, being, like, important. Like, the fact that there's, like, broken pods in Hollow Bastion and KH1 ends up becoming a, <laughs> a very important... Okay, okay. So, so the Luna of, of Stars... Actually, here, you know what? This is actually a great thing to talk about. I'll, I'll talk about this. Because I've already kind of spoiled this for you, like you said. I don't mind spoiling this. So, I once had to... This is, like, I kind of had, like, floated around as an idea last year. Was, uh... To come up with a me, to come up with a stream, and it would just be called Scala spoils everything, where I take an unsuspecting friend, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to spoil this piece of media for you, so because that's the only way I can properly explain to you how much I love it. <laughs> but the thing is, like, doing that requires so much work. Mm -hmm. But we could do the one piece of media I was considering doing this with, and I actually will uh, go and grab a screenshot because it will work out slightly better. Uh, I have to. I think it's. Yes.
All right. Because I've, I've told you about this series. So All right. I, I told you about the series last year, though, when I was watching it. So maybe you remember. Maybe you don't. That's fine if you don't. It's totally cool. Which, uh, one of the car series I thought would work really great for this is King of Prism. Mm -hmm. Yep. Spoil your favorite. Well, at least. Well, here, so here's the reason why King of Prism is easy is is interesting for this, and I'm going to spoil all of this for you, chat. Uh, ooh, as that really nice mel medley comes on. So you have King of Prism, which is this game that looks well. It was it was both an anime and a game. Looks super cool, super cute. You know, you're sort of your general sort of you know idle nonsense kind of thing. Where's uh? One of the songs from it because that will help with this slightly uh i actually have to like sit here and look there it is um i need like a good like example song Oh, yeah, actually, Dramatic Love is, is a good example. Where is that? Okay, there we go. I'll play it for a little bit, but, like, this is what this series, like, looks and sounds like, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Got, got all the cute idol boy vibes going on with it. And then, like, and this is what got me to watch it. Like, I found out, like, basically, like, one of the major plot points in the game is highly, like, I don't know if it's 100% inspired by it, but it sure as hell feels like it. There's, like, this whole Xenogears element to it. <laughs> Where it's just, like, yeah, there's like reincarnation romance happening and like defiance of God and there's like straight up like um like shot for shot references to Evangelion in the middle of it. And you're like, what? What is happening here? <laughs> also, like you have to pick a boy. Oh, oh, I don't I, I, I remember who I picked for you. But if, yeah. you're, if you're just going on, on looks and vibes, which boy are we picking here? So, like, the, 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 the one I'm picking is most likely to start HRT is my metric for this. <laughs> that is good metric, good metric. Um, um. I mean, I know what the answer is to that, but... <laughs> Like the canon answer. And so I think it's uh, the one in the, the 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 back one in the hat, the, not the not the guy in the foreground of the hat, but the one behind him. Oh, uh, right here where I'm, the hand is is moving. Yeah, you, Koji. Put the hand is, up. Oh, sorry, that that's not Koji. God, it's the thing is like this is one of the things where it's like, oh no, it's been a while and I forgot all the names. <laughs> this, this code. Yeah, that one. Wait, hold up. Oh wait, I have the whole list of all the character names right in front of me. What am I doing? Yeah, Koji. Okay, cool. <laughs> Koji is a good. Is an interesting choice. Like, so. I'll, I won't kind of go into the whole long bit because Koji has like all this sort of like drama and everything. But Koji and like right behind him, a uh, hero there in the star outfit. Uh, they have like this very weird friendship slash rivalry slash. I'm pretty sure Hero has a giant crush on Koji and doesn't know how to express it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um. But most likely to go on HRT is uh, Leo down here in uh, in pink. 
literally mm. like when he finally gets a, a a solo song it is basically the entire theme of of it is it's okay to be gender non-conforming and yeah that's the whole that's the whole thing but like you know that's someone who strikes me yes. as you know, I am very okay with being gender non-conforming and cute, and I am very happy with my gender presentation as it is right now, mm. after thinking about it. Ah, got you, got you. Which, which that, is, that is what happens with, with, with Leo. That That's like his entire story arc, basically. Yeah, where I was looking for the egg who has not cracked yet. The egg who has not cracked yet. I mean, you also have, uh, oh, now, now it's, no, 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 we don't need dramatic love again. Thank you. That's cool. Uh, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, gender is super weird. I should say super weird, but it, it is definitely more complicated than you think it's going to be. Does that make sense? There we go. That's, like, a better way to put it. Y yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, both in general and in this series in particular. Got it. But anyway, uh, in case you're curious, uh, our Xenogears, like, weird stuff character is uh back here that's uh that's louie who is secretly an ai angel sent from the the the, the freaking gods of music to come this. yeah and then like he had like a I mean, yeah, gender is super weird. I can say that as a genderqueer person. <laughs> but anyway, and then, you know, he falls in love with Shin, who's our main character. And it's one of those things where I feel that Louis just so uh, skews everything. Because <laughs> Louis' gaydar is... Well, I should say that. Lu Louis is so queer that, like... He makes everything else have to be graded on a curve against him. Does that make does that make more sense? That is fair. He's like an outlier, and then everything like like basically, if this was like a show that was slight that, that did not have Louis, there we go. That did not have Louis as he is. Like all the other queer stuff would already be there. And would be sort of like, wow, that's really queer. And then you have Louis, and you're like, wow, Louis is exceptionally queer. <laughs> Who decides, you know, I'm just going to defy God because a boy is cute. And you're like, good job, Louis. You, good job, buddy. And I don't care about whatever. I'm going to wear whatever the heck I want. Why? Because... Because cause I'm an AI angel and gender is a construct. It's kind of Hell like the, yeah. the vibes you get from Louis. I mean, to just to, just to kind of like be like, you need to understand. Like this, this, this show has. I, I'm going to go back to, to the playlist I was just on. Um, what's the name? Uh, it's Promise. That's right. Let me see if I can actually... Gender, it exists. Gender, it exists. Where they basically take the, 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 the two, our main sort of, like, couple, Shin and Louie, and they basically have a song about getting married. Aww. And, like, it, the whole, and like, Louie's just like, yeah, I want to get married, and I want to wear a wedding dress. And you're like, you go, Louie, you do whatever you want, my friend. <laughs> and the I read, like, a whole bunch of, like, that was in the game, and to me, the funniest part of the whole game thing is... Louis, like, the whole thing is that Louis is supposed to be doing, like, an ad for a wedding company and has to pick someone to play, like, the other half of the couple. And he makes, like, uh, he makes everyone have to propose to, him <laughs> to decide who, who he's going to make marry. 
and then and then of course Shin wins because Louis in love with Shin like that's like just canon. But then he makes like Shin like propose to him like multiple times to make sure that Shin gets it exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, King of Prism. It's an interesting series. Uh, you can go watch it if you ever feel like watching it. Uh, like ask me because the watch order is like a little weird. Because the watch order is there's like two movies. That you have to watch in order, and then the TV series. But it was an interesting thing. Unfortunately, it's one of those things that it suffered a lot because of COVID. Because one of the big things with King of Prism was this whole concept of cheer screenings. Where you would like watch like the movies and even like the anime episodes in like a theater with like a whole bunch of other fans. You'd all have like your glow sticks and everything. And like there are concerts, like the concerts are great. It's mainly worth it for uh Louis is played by uh uh Aoi Shota, which my sort of running joke is that if anyone on this earth is an angel secretly in disguise, it's Aoi Shota. <laughs> Just out there doing whatever you know, he feels like. You go, Aoi Shota. But I have this... Here, I'll sort of get off the uh, idle music, because I know it's probably distracting. Even though I like <laughs> listening to it. Uh, I mean, it's definitely good stuff. It's... I, the thing is, it's like, I... I like... Like, all the sort of silly idol stuff. I've watched several idol series. They're... They're usually like my sort of what I call like my popcorn series. Because usually it's just like, all right, cool, we're going to get into a situation. And then we have to, you know, use music to solve the situation kind of thing. But they, you kind of like, there's always has to be like something like at least like slightly weird going on. Like it can never just be that. <laughs> mm hmm. Like, I watched uh, sort of, like, one of the, I guess, like, sort of uh, starters of the whole, like, you know, thing, uh, which is uh, Uteno Prince-sama. I was watching that while it was running originally, uh, which I've only watched, like, the first two seasons of it. There's, like, four seasons of it. And it's just and it's just one of those things where the, the thing about Uteno Prince-sama that, that amuses me is, you know, you have, like, your sort of your, your main character... You're sort of, you know, adorable every girl. And the thing is, they kept adding more and more boys, but they will never let the love, like, polyhedron ever collapse. So it just, like, it's basically like romantic, unresolved romantic tension, the, 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 the TV series. Mm hmm where I think it's like, I don't know. I have to actually sit and do math. It's like, I don't know, almost like 20 guys who all have a crush on her. <laughs> and like, I know like for the first two seasons, they changed who was like, most likely guy to win. <laughs> it's just like, okay. <laughs> but you can never collapse it. You can never like, have that resolution. Like, in the actual game, like, Uchino Prince-sama started as a, as a rhythm and dating sim. Like, in that, you actually could collapse it. And then they did the whole sort of thing where, um... Like, you could, like, then sort of, like, continue with whoever your chosen boy was. Though I don't think those ever came out in English. I think those were Japanese only. There's a, there's a lot of that sort of stuff where it's just, like... I would probably be... All that stuff is, like, Japanese only, and I get, like... It's like, oh, really? Because I can... You know, I have played Japanese only stuff, uh, as we sort of established earlier, but it's like... Oh, that requires so much brain. That requires so much brain. But sometimes I don't want to have to... What if... What if no brain? What if 
no brain. I want to watch you to know Prince Sama and not have to brain. No thoughts, head empty. No, I mean, I mean, the, you can't, go. you can't, you can play the gotcha game, the gotcha rhythm game. That's in English. So at least they kind of did that. Anyway, also, uh, best Uchapri boy is is uh, is Natsuki. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like I said, it's this whole thing where it's just like, I want to like explain things. The only way I can explain things is if I spoil them. It is the ultimate, I don't know, curse? I don't know what to call it. I think that's why, <laughs> well, this is kind of like why I, I like communities. Like I said, we, we were talking earlier about the whole sort of thing about like fanfic and other kind of like communities outside of just like the speed running and competitive of communities excuse you are you making my new layers yeah you were making my new layers in the folder nope okay oh there they are i guess there we go But yeah, but like that's one of the reasons why I like the sort of like the fanfic and fan art communities is because the vibe is different. And like one of the vibes is like, you know, you could just talk like, you know, meta and like story meta and character meta and, you know, plot stuff. But also it kind of comes with like, you know, the sort of you could have like sort of like very serious conversations about that but then it also comes side by side with like you know the the you know the shipping sort of fun stuff the smashing the barbie dolls together mm -hmm. which is also fun and you can kind of have both of those two things together and i think that if you if you've never experienced that, I definitely think it is a good, like, you know, sort of uh, media interaction experience. Yeah. Give our happy little tree a friend. Give, give Make our happy little tree have someone to, to smooch and kiss. <clears throat> That's what we were talking about earlier. When we were talking about like shipping dynamics and the. What is it? I, I've heard the thing that, that the shipping is the opposite of objectification. It's sub subjectification. Because hmm. it's actually a really interesting way of put uh, of thinking about it. Yeah, because it's so much like, or like a ship that you really like, it becomes like so much, like, about those two particular characters, or you know, if you're. Paul, your multi shipper, those, you know, X amount of characters. And it's about, you know, sort of di diving into the nuances of that particular relationship. Hey, obviously, you know, there are definitely ways where you can do, you know, relationship discussions. Yeah, value exploring a character through their lens of interactions with others. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of. Try to think of like a good example. All right, here we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk about an unfinished fanfic. That's fine. I had to think about what <laughs> which one to talk about. So I had like an unfinished fanfic. I would like to actually go and finish it because I think the ideas are interesting. Um. Where, um, I sort of mentioned it at the beginning, you know, I am you know, in the free enterprise community, you know, the FF4 community, you know, I do a lot of stuff in there, and I love, you know, hearing people's different, you know, thoughts and interpretations on the game and its characters. But, um, 
you know, one of the, the things that is sort of like a very uh, common interpretation, at least, at least in the circles I move in. Is that uh, the concept of, of, of trans girl Rydia? Mm -hmm. And I actually did like, and so I was trying to figure out, like, all right, well, how do you actually, you know, do that, you know, as like a fic, as like a story to kind of tell with that sort of concept? Is it blue or, red or pink on the top for the trans pride flag? I always, it's like one of um, those weird like color dyslexia things where I always like forget which order it is. Honestly, like if it were up to me, it would rotate. It should rotate. And I have seen variations where depending upon which order you put them in it has slightly different meaning. Yeah. Um, um, so... Oh, it's blue uh, on the Google, top. Google implies it, it's blue outside. Okay. But honestly, just like how we have undefined behavior spelled yes. with with and without a U, I I personally think the trans rights flag uh, should flip around, just like from context to context. Well, that's what I said. I've seen I've seen people do that. Yeah. There you go. Well, we'll do we'll do the traditional one. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it was like this sort of concept of like, okay, so, you know, I want to, you know, like, all right, so let's like actually like sit, because I because I hadn't seen anyone like actually sit down in a fic and explore that. I'm like, all right, cool. So how do you like explore that kind of thing? Which I think is like an interesting kind of question. And so here's the thing where we talk about like you know. Uh, you know, shipping and everything. Like my 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 very very first like what I can call like a ship like that I can kind of like remember was uh, Edge and Rydia from FF4. Like that was like the first time like you know my little you know babby nerd brain kind of hooked into something. So it's like okay, so even though this is like like a ship that I really really like, it's one that I've never really written before, so. Like, how do you sort of go and, like, sort of take this sort of, you know, <laughs> thank you, everyone, for having good flag discussion in chat. I like it. <laughs> also, it's very weird because I'm trying to draw, like, edge of, like, a little here. I think if I had to draw it, like, together. There we go. That's better. That just is a weird character to draw. Because you have to have his little, like, mask and everything. Ponytail. I've, I've drawn him a few times now. That's the one nice thing about doing free enterprise is that I, I, I've had reason to draw all the, uh, the FF4 characters. Mm -hmm. Slide. We have to kind of figure out how to slide another flag in here. Well, well, actually, here you hold it on the other side, buddy. But anyway, so it's like, well, something that I feel I felt would be like, I feel weird calling it logical, but at the same time, that's kind of like the right way to call it. Would be like, you know, well, Rydia actually does reciprocate, you know. Edge's feelings, but is very nervous because, like, you know, if you want to do anything about that, you kind of have to, like, sit him down and be like, just so you know, you know, I'm trans kind of thing was sort of like the thought. And that Rudy had a lot of anxiety about that. But of course, I'm just solved and I'm like, well, he's pan, it's fine. <laughs> I think, I mean, I think Edge is pan no matter what, but that's me. That's me. I mean, that just makes sense. That just makes sense. I mean, that's just me projecting my my bipan 
gender, queer, non-binary thing on basically everything. <laughs> and I mean, like, l l let's be real. Ha has anyone met a straight ninja before? No. Like, really? No. No. But basically, like, where the, f the fic kind of, like, was going towards was basically, what if just, like, everyone in the FF4 final party was queer? Because <laughs> one of the things I sort of, you know, I've done, like, art about, which actually I'll probably just go and pull that up and bring that over to show, because it's, it's good art, and I like sharing it. Which I'm a big proponent of, um... Of, uh... Of genderqueer... Uh... Cecil or Cecil, whichever way you want to pronounce it. But, you know... Like, that's definitely a character look at. I'm like, I'm like... No, you, you, you are, you are... You got some, you got some interesting gender things going on there, my, my friend. Mm -hmm. So that's why... Uh, if you ever see me draw uh, Cecil, um, I always make the the hair beads. I uh, always make them uh, trans and genderqueer colors. <laughs> Here, uh, I have to go find that art. Art I'm talking about. Art that I really like. Uh, it's... From the last Highway to the Zima Zone. Which, that was the new Highway to the Zima Zone starts this week. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. That I was not paying attention. That's so soon. Yeah, it starts Tuesday. Well, best of luck to all the free enterprise runners. <laughs> It'll be a good time. It'll be fine. But um, something I did for for ZZ Four is I did a whole bunch of album art, and so I went and I, me and Xenocat, we wrote a whole song. Called uh, called Grant Me the Moon. We actually wrote the art. I, I sorry, we wrote a song. I did art for it, which is all about gender feelings, <laughs> but through the lens of Final Fantasy IV. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that was an interesting sort of thing. Well, I don't know. Do we play it? That's up to you and chat, I guess. I can I can make that happen. I'll leave it up to y'all. I like sharing it, but I, I want it to, you know. Uh, here, at least we'll go and figure out where the heck I put the file. Do it? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I only need one person to tell me to do something, and then I'll be like, okay! I'm that kind of person. I will turn up the volume, yes. Uh, uh. This is this is very true. Free Enterprise is very much the querying of game structure. Alright. Uh, okay. One of these days, I should sit down and actually write out the panel of randomizers as querying. They are. Anyway, uh, cool. Give me one second. Let me uh, pause hey, hey. what we're looking to do. Want to help me with that? Okay. Uh, so enjoy for like, hopefully this is loud enough. If you t Tell me if I need to, th to turn it up louder because I will. I will. I'll actually, we'll just go ahead and bump it up. Uh, have fun, y'all. Grant me the starlight Unbind me from this standard And fill me with their cosmic truth Grant 
It's a thing. It was a thing that I did. And it was. Uh, it was a request to, to to share the the lyrics, and I'll no, actually let me get the music back down to where it needs to be. But it was a very that 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 whole thing was a very that was like when I was still recovering from being sick, and I don't know. The whole kind of concept just kind of came to me one day, and I was just like, I guess I'm just writing a song now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know, it's, but it is this sort of thing where you're sort of, I think that that is a lot of why I like the sort of fanficish culture, because it is a lot of processing things, you know, through, through characters. Mm -hmm. Actually, here we brought. I, I listed them on my uh, thing about things I would be happy to draw. Uh, I think it's Slayer Seven. You know, um, here we also talk about this because this was also an ECC thing, um, where. I'm definitely one of those people who like, and I, I know there are some people who, you know, everyone kind of deals with their whole, with their gender stuff, you know, in a whole variety of ways. Mm -hmm. You know, even, even even people, you know, who are who are still, still deal with gender stuff, they just might not quite have the same tools or experiences, but everyone deals with gender stuff. But um, for 
ECC back in 2020, I, uh, I participated in the Glitches Are Queer game jam. I made an entire game. If you want to, you can go find it on, on itch. Right, my name on there is Scala Kitty. The name of the game is Diagnostics. Uh, and it's an interactive fiction game. That was just full of original characters. And, like, the one who, you know, sort of... St st stands out as the main character. Uh, I am not doing a good job drawing them. It's very hard to... It's one of those things, like, like where, like... The thing where it's like your taste in characters is like really pretty, and like you are mainly a chibi artist. I can't do really pretty stuff if I put my mind to it. Mm -hmm. It's just not what, like, I have to like force myself. Also, I don't usually draw direct on a tablet. Usually I sketch on paper and then I, and then I, uh, import. Like the sketches and then I draw over the sketches. Just because I find that drawing on paper is still what feels the most natural to me, but that's because I didn't have a cool like monitor like this for for years and years. That's other things. But I worked out a lot of my gender stuff by writing a like well. You can, we, you definitely can like use like as the thing is I don't want to call you know them non-binary because they're not non-binary but I uh, they use the term they I went with and 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 androgyne I can get there androgynous mm -hmm. but my my OC Celeste who helped me sort of deal with a lot of the gender things because like you know as so. To let people know what diagnostics is, diagnostics is a, uh... Actually, here, I don't necessarily want them as good as this track is. I don't necessarily want this behind what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, uh, Leet Saber. I absolutely agree. Uh... <laughs> yes, uh, actually, here, this is... But, uh, Diagnostics is set, like, in the far, far future, and it's, uh, set... It was sort of written in 2020 as a bit of... as prime escapist fiction. Because <laughs> it was this whole sort of thought of, well, if I was to create, a, like, a world, what would I want it to be like, basically? It's like, alright, it's solar punk, it's, you know, very, you know, kind and loving and accepting kind of world. So, um, and, and the, the main character of it, Celeste, like, really embodies that, uh, so they are an android, um, and they're, uh, sort of, they're an android technician, so they're sort of, they're sort of like a, like an android, like, you know, they work in, like, the android, like, medical field, like, you know, taking care of, like, problems with other androids, but also, like, problems with robots, and even with, like, other tech. And diagnosis is very interesting because, you know, in doing the, um, the sort of the, the, the initial sort of like, you know, planning and world building for it, I, I feel weird putting him down here. I always referred, like, I kind of like had, you know, these are like OCs I'd had for like a long time, but I had like Celeste and then, um, and also, I'm being lazy and not, like, trying to draw people actually looking at each other, because it's faster for me to draw facing this way. That's one of those sorts of things of drawing. And right now, we're just, we're, we're just, we're just, we're not thinking when we're drawing. We're talking, and that's why it's okay if we... Yeah. We're just sort of drawing brain, along. Brain only do one thing at once. 
brain can do two things, but the second thing has to be slightly adjusted. Fair. But yeah, so I had Celeste and I had their, um, at the time, their partner, uh, Sildan. And when I was sort of doing the world building for the game, I kept referring to them as being uh, like married. And then I was like, well, what if, what, what if actually married kind of thing? Also, I'm going to find like my better sketches of them after I'm done with this. So I'm like, I, I need you to understand they're much cuter than this. And so when you're dealing with like, you know, a science fiction story that has, you know, androids in it, like saying these androids are married, like implies so much about the society that they're in and sort of it was an interesting sort of thing to kind of work from that as the starting point. Of like, okay, I want to justify these characters being married. What do I what do I do with them from there? Um Okay, there we go. The one really decent sketch I managed to do with the two of them. <laughs> there they are. Much be much much better sketches. <laughs> But that was a really fun experience because I wanted to, with uh, with diagnostics, to go with um, every everyone in the game is queer, everyone, and then sort of you know, kind of going outwards from that, you know, you sort of have. It's like all right, so what is you know what does that just look like? But it's like it doesn't look. To me, I'm like, it doesn't look that much different from any other sort of... It should not, I should say. It should not look that much different from any other sort of piece of media, except that all the people involved are queer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it still had, you know, characters who were serious and characters who were funny, you know, and... Um... And all sort of different sorts of, like, like relationships and everything. So, you know, like you had like a serious character. Um, like, uh, like Corbin is like a serious character. Mm -hmm. You know. You know, who's sort of, you know, kind of comes in and has been having problems and is very, like, grumpy about the whole thing. But, you know, and then, you know, but, like, in the middle of all that, you know, there's just, like... You know, casual reference, you know, to him, you know, you know, being on, you know, on, on HRT and everything. You know, and, and, you know, he has a boyfriend and all this sort of stuff. But, you know, yeah. that's just sort of, but all of that, like, kind of works together. But then, you know, at the same time, you know, you also can have, you know much more like humorous characters like uh like Ceres who you know they're um sorry A sorry um I always I, well, I, I love all the concepts around EM pronouns I always it has to take me a second to to, to use them but, you know, but, you know. Where, you know, E is like, you know, a gender and everything. And sort of has like this sort of, you know, very, you know, sort of, you know, bubbly sense of humor kind of thing.
That's, I don't know. I, I like, I like the... So, Diagnosis was interesting because, like, that was basically me sort of taking a whole bunch of my, like, existing OCs and shoving them into a story. <laughs> <laughs> so I had, had, like, I mean, a... How else are you going to use them? This is true. This was actually, um... I thought it was very, like, like I said, it was kind of interesting because, like, you know, then ca some characters would change, like... Because, like, some of them came from, like, other I story ideas. Like, Corbin originally came from, like, a much more serious story idea. So that I had to kind of, like, soften him up <laughs> for mm -hmm. for this one. I had, like, I had some pretty old characters in there. Mm -hmm. uh, who had been around for, like, a long time. Um, but I was glad to kind of actually give them, like, a home and everything. Start trying to doodle up. Like, I know my time is almost up. Um. I do thank you all for letting me kind of come in and sort of do something very different than what I was originally supposed to do. I do super duper appreciate that. And we had fun. We talked about a whole bunch of things. We talked... I made everyone have to acknowledge the fact that there are multiple Shinra siblings. Uh, we talked about <laughs> shipping dynamics. Uh, I explained at least a little bit of uh, King of Prism. Uh, we got to listen to a song. It was all good stuff. Good stuff. I got to do with Leggy, my good friend. Yeah. yeah. It is always a blast to just hang out yeah. and chat for a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, of course, we're only, like, what, halfway through the day? Yeah. Yeah, there's two more things going what on today. Is, what is up next? Up next, we have uh, Celie Faye doing a panel on brain hacks done quick. Brain? Ooh, Which that sounds super interesting. I know a little bit about, and I am super excited for it. And I'm glad that, you know, it's happening and I get to relax and listen to Faye for an hour. Because after that, I'm dragging myself, a Demarine, an Ooh. Amethyst Rox, oh, wow. and the Zoe Vermilion oh, into a uh, multi-game multi-world. Oh my gosh, um, what games are y'all playing? So... There's going to be some nonsense in there. I, I, I want to keep it a surprise because... We only settled on the final game list three hours ago. Love it. Love surprise nonsense. <laughs> well, I suppose I know we'll have to get to the next folks uh, going. I'm stealing just a bit, um, but I suppose I should. Uh, I should. I should. I should like do a thing where I talk about where the heck you can find me, except for the fact that I never stream. <laughs> they can find you, um... I mean, I, I they, am... They can find you on my frame details couch coming up. That is true, that is true. We're going to be, I'm going to be on, a uh, Leggy's couch. We're playing, um, uh, Final Fantasy Legend 2, which is a fantastic game. Uh, I consider it to be one of the best Game Boy games of all time. And I don't think that that's a uh, exaggeration. What do you what do you think, Leggy? Do you agree? I mean, I think there's a lot of great games of all time. This is true. Uh, well, uh, we're we're talking Game Boy games in particular. There's a lot of good Game Boy games okay. out there. Okay. I've seen. True. True. <laughs> we're going. We're but we're going to take a robot and uh, we're just going to start duct taping stuff to it. And also, there will be girls. There will be girls. There might also be a meat roulette. Meat roulette! Uh, meat roulette is... It's fun, but it's also stressful. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's true in real life and in video games. But that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, uh, the next... Free Enterprise event. Uh, Highway to the Zima Zone 5 is starting this week. I'm going to be involved in a lot of that. Uh, uh, so, 
if I do end up uh, streaming, it's uh, at Scala Kitty. I would like to get back into it after ZZ5, I have to say. I kind of have missed it. Yeah. And I miss I Cozy Scala streams. Cozy Scala streams. Um, so we'll see if I can kind of get back into that. Uh, you could also follow me on Twitter, uh, which is at Scala Kitty. Um, it's mostly <laughs> like, it's mostly me like retweeting stuff. Occasionally I do have stuff to say. Usually it's like, I ate this great food. <laughs> Which, honestly, 10 out of 10, best kind of Twitter content. Best kind of, of Twitter content. I try, anyway. Um, we'll see. Maybe I might get to have some uh, photos from doing a local crafting event soon. I hope so. Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, uh, it's still all in the process, but hopefully I get to do a local queer crafting event, which I'm really excited for. Heck yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to go ahead, let the lovely folks at uh, ECC uh, get ready for everyone else. Um, thank you all again for just sitting and chilling with me in chat as Leggy and I have like weird rambling conversations, which is this is basically what it's like being with me in a VC at any given time. If you just let me kind of go, I will have random conversations with you and try to spoil things for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And be like, I need you to understand how much I love this thing. The only way I can explain to you how much I love this thing is to spoil it for you. I'm very sorry. But sometimes I don't feel that bad. If it's something where I think, yes, you should go experience unspoiled, I won't spoil you. If it's something where I'm like, no, I don't want to have you have to take up eight hours of your life watching this weird anime series. I'll just explain it to you. Here's why I enjoy Homestuck. <laughs> I mean, you can do that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not right now. Not, not right now. now. We do not have enough time for that. No one has enough time for Homestuck. <laughs> Look, I, I have read all of the original run of Homestuck. I, mean, I, I was also unemployed in undergrad when okay. I that, read that, the bulk of it. That makes sense. I, I, I read through until like the really big hiatus, and then I kind of dropped off. I was never super into it. I was more just like, why am I friends screaming about this thing. Ah, I see now. <laughs> but with that, we'll turn it all over to uh, to Seely Fay and uh, to the rest of the ECC crew. So thank you all again, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your fuzzy logic. Mm -hmm.